G'day folks, it's Rob here. Had a couple of people ask what I was going to do with this top bed, uh, the one just behind me in the top of the hoop house there, now that it's been invaded by tree roots. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at um, what I'm doing with it and how I'm dealing with the issue. Uh, also too, we'll go for a bit of a wander through and show you a few other bits and pieces I showed in another clip, uh, just updates on pest issues and the bees and whatnot. Uh, also too, um, hopefully I'll be posting another clip on Sunday on Danny and Danielle's aquaponic system, a very impressive 3000 and leader jobby i uh, did a bit of filming a while back and i've almost finished editing it and i've also got a couple of other clips on the way um, people have asked if they could see how bianca made up the rosella jam so she's agreed to um, have a bit of a chat about that and also too i've got one on drying turmeric uh, a lot of people ask how i was going to process it after uh, posting the aquaponic harvest clip so i'll have a bit of a wander through the patch now and i'll just show you how i've sorted out that top bed and also a few little updates on other bits and pieces that are going on like the bees and whatnot um, and also too at the end i've got a little bit of an announcement to make so let's get cracking so with this top bed i've pretty much all decided not to keep it as a wicking bed anymore um, you can see that little root section down there sticking out from the side i found loads so i've pretty much all decided just to treat it as a normal garden bed and dug out as many roots as i could first though um, i'm just going to come along and spot water all these plants and come the end of the season this bed will come out and we'll replace it with some better wicking beds just in this end here i have six broccoli uh, there's three on either side they're a little bit small in the center there i have a tomato i got from slea steaks rules via media maker 2000 dale so thank you very much chaps um, it'll be interesting to see how that tomato goes it's a very large fruit so hopefully i'll be able to grow him up and then trellis him along the top of these um, bars here that run the length of the hoop house keep him out of the way of everything else just there i have a sage plant i figured i needed to fill the gap Oh, under all that mulch as well, I sprinkled a whole heap of marigold seeds. So we'll get something popping up in between. A couple of flowers for the insects once we lift the netting. In the center here, I've pretty much all just let it go fallow. There's a couple of perennial leeks there struggling along. I dare say that that pumpkin's nearly exhausted all the nutrients from this section of the bed. And as I'm ripping it out, you know, I figure I might as well just let the pumpkin stay. Down this end here, we have six cauliflowers, three either side, um, as before with the broccoli. I sprinkled a whole heap of marigold under the mulch. In the center there, we have a summertime gold dwarf tomato. I figured down this end here, seeing as the sun comes from that direction, it's going to get a lot better light. Uh, here, you can see one of the four large root sections I pulled out from this end down here. I broke the other three off, but I left this one here. So I left him there as a warning to the other tree roots. So I don't know whether they'll take it or not, but yeah. So just to prepare these two ends, what I did was the other day I came down and dumped a wheelbarrow load of compost in both ends. And then I also popped in a decent amount of the organic chicken fertilizer, as well as a whole heap of the trace minerals that I got from David. Cheers, David. So they're rock dust minerals. The reason I'm adding them in is basically those trees would have robbed a lot of nutrients from this bed and if I do want to get some sort of a yield before I pull this bed down and use the soil elsewhere I figured I pretty much well should supercharge it just so we get a decent crop off this season so yeah a little bit disheartening but then again the garden's being rearranged so it's no great loss the bed was coming out anyway. Uh, the bed next to it was the last one I planted out and I think I showed on video down the end here we have the cauliflower uh, they were pretty much well ravaged by the army caterpillar but i sprayed some dipole on them and got them under control we've had a bit of rain so and they need a respray i just thought i'd lay off and wait until um, all the rain had passed down the sides there the onions are doing well uh, the three romas in the middle are doing all right they're being joined by some refugee perennial leeks the sage has come on well so is the rainbow chard, looking very green. The only disappointment so far have been these honeypod peas. They just don't look like they're happy up that end of the bed. So not too sure what's going on there. Just outside the hoop house here, we have a root pouch from the pond. Um, took him out of the pond just to let him dry out. It's full of water chestnuts. So as soon as it dries out a bit, we'll um, pull the pouch apart. I'll empty the contents anyway and uh, we'll see what sort of a water chestnut harvest we have. Just wanted to show you how effective that dipole is. Uh, well, it's a BT, Bacillus thuringiensis. These leaves here, if you have saw the other clip, um, this perennial collard was absolutely ravaged by um, caterpillars, but all the newer leaves, absolutely perfect, not a problem. And they've sprouted since 
the plant was sprayed. So whether I've um, broken the cycle, which I pretty much will doubt, or there was a little bit of residual on those leaves as they were coming through, it looks like that's pretty much well protected, but I will be giving it another spray again. Uh, just down here, I still haven't gotten those mites. We had the washing machine blow up. So yeah, it's been put on the back burner again. Down here, the strawberries are going really well. Uh, the runners are being put out just feeding off the water in the tray. And as you can see, we've got a couple of funky fruit forming on down in there. Um, over here, we have some snow peas. Very, very impressed with these snow peas. Not snow peas, sorry, honeypod peas. Very impressed with them. Uh, Bianchi came down and harvested this side last night. The ones in that pouch don't look to be doing as well as the other one, but yeah, pretty happy with them. Just a little bit earlier, I pulled a couple of the carrots out of this pouch here. Fairly decent size, so they'll be going into night salad as well. The other plants down in here, well, we've only got the strawberries still, and I ended up planting the garlic in a barrel up near the house. So these guys here have still got purslane and also coriander, which has gone to flower. Um, I'm fine letting them go to flower. We'll end up with more seeds spread around. Not only that, it gives the bees something to forage on at this time of year. So just over here with the native bees, these guys are still going well. We're still hitting around about 20 degrees Celsius most days, if not above. So they're still getting out to forage every day. I actually went out and checked um, a mate's Tetragonula australis hive. G'day Luke. Um, he's an apiarist out at Lockyer Waters and he opened up his australis hive for us. It was interesting to see, you know, the inside of their hive. They also too, um, cover their opening every night, so it gives them a little bit more insulation. Don't want to get too close and disturb these guys, so yeah, I just thought it was interesting to see a different hive. I'll actually leave a link to um, Luke's Facebook page and also his website. He sells honey hives, or I should say bee hives, so check that out. It's down in the description below. If you saw the earlier clip, I was having a few issues with a parasitic wasp. It looks to have slowed down and there doesn't look to be any more uh, new maggots or bees that have fallen in there. So um, maybe it's just a cyclic thing. Hopefully by stopping the larvae and the, or the maggots from pupating in the ground, we've broken the cycle. We'll just wait and see. But these guys, as you can see, very busy. Bianca was down here earlier and she was watching them remove trash from the hive taking it out and deposit it somewhere else. So that was all very interesting. Quick one on the aquaponics here. These little <laughs> Wongbok cabbages have just gone burko. They're, they're just seriously growing better than most we've had before. Um, even the rainbow chart over the back there is doing really well. So the fish, strangely enough, haven't gone off their feed like they have in other years. I think it's just the warmer weather. So over here, more parsley. Some of this perpetual spinach will be coming off tonight. Bianca informs me we're having a salad while the girls aren't here. So. Looking forward to honing into that. Just a quick little update on the barrel build. This little one is growing really well, even though there's no goldfish in it yet. At the moment, I've just been adding a few little fish food pellets in there, and that pretty much all breaks down, helps cycle the system and gets it kick-started. This guy here, um, I still haven't um, rung up the people who are gonna get this. I need to get in contact with you this week. If you watch this, let me know. Also gave the lime tree a very heavy prune back during the week. It's still got some fruit on in there. So hopefully they'll stick and it's still got uh, a couple of blooms on the go. As you can see, we did have a um, nutrient deficiency, but hopefully looking at the new leaves, it isn't as bad anymore. Um, what I've done is down the bottom, I put in probably about uh, half a wheelbarrow full of compost and also to a sprinkling of chicken, organic chicken fertilizer and some rock dust minerals. Those rock dust minerals hopefully will correct any imbalance in the soil. They don't work straight away. They do take some time to become plant available in the soil, but fingers crossed, hopefully they'll correct any of the deficiency that was coming through. The branches and a couple of arrowroot plants from underneath the tree were run through the chipper we have and then put on as mulch on top of the compost and the fertilizer mix I added. I just figured they might as well break down all that material break down and add nutrients back into the soil to feed the tree again. While I was at it, I also nipped off a couple of the branches growing underneath the tree that were touching the ground and just went through and nipped off any of the galls I found that have been created by the gall wasps. Just, you know, a little bit of general maintenance here and there around the tree. We did manage to take a couple of limes off there and I did see one down here that I missed the other day. So we can take him off later on this afternoon. Finally managed to get my garlic out. Not well, only, what, two, three months too late, but yeah, they've all shot. They were vernalizing in the fridge for quite a long time. Yeah, we're not going to get a bumper harvest, but yeah, at least we'll get something to see us through. Uh, next year, I'll just have to be a lot more vigilant and yeah, try not to get so distracted with other things that are going on. 
and get it out at the right time. For us here in southeast Queensland, we pretty much all are supposed to get them out in March, and I got them out in mid June. So there you go. Uh, I know um, other places they pretty much will pop them out round about now, but yeah, it's just too warm up here. So I dare say we're not going to get proper bulb formation on these guys, but at least we'll get something to flavour our meals with. So there's a bit of a roundup on what's been going on in the patch this week. Actually, we're not quite done yet. There's one more thing to do. I need to get a haircut. So as you can see, nice and short on the side. So thank you very much, Bianca. You're welcome. So feeling nice and light. Um, big announcement. Well, it's more of uh, something Bianca pointed out that's led to an announcement. She's been on seven weeks long service leave and she's got a couple left or a bit over one week left, which is pretty sad, but anyway. Um, she pointed out within the first week how much time I spend answering questions in particular, in particular from Facebook on our page there every day. Um, I was getting up to three, four hours a day there, just going back and forth with some people. Apparently it had to stop and it has. Um, we've spent a little bit more time together, which is great. Um, but she has suggested, and I've had people suggest it to me before, to start up a Patreon account. Uh, Patreon is basically a, a place where people can become patrons of my channel and throw a few bob here and there um, and in return I give you early access to some material, some photos I don't post elsewhere and updates and maybe Q&As and maybe some FaceTime and that sort of thing. haven't quite worked the perks out yet but um, I think that's a more suitable way for me to spend my time helping people who are serious because no offence to a lot of you folks out there but there's always those guys that will take up an hour or two of my time and I don't even get a thank you or an update on how they're gone so I figured this will weed a few of those guys out. Um, I'm still there to answer questions on our YouTube clips and I'll still be posting free YouTube clips. Um, this will just be another way for me to um, help you guys add a little bit of value to what I do here. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I mentioned before we've got the turmeric video coming up and also too on Sunday or the day after this one gets posted probably I'll um, have the walk around Danny and Daniel's aquaponics system. So. I think that pretty much will cover this a little update for today. Uh, Bianca's arm's getting tired holding the, um, the workshop light that's lighting the film at the moment. So thank you very much for coming along and I hope you've enjoyed the clip and you've got something out of it maybe. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and you'll be sent an email every time we post a clip to YouTube. So hope everyone is well and happy and I'll catch you next weekend. Cheers folks, actually tomorrow. Cheers folks, I'll take it easy. The Butcher of Seville. <laughs> So you want your ears? I like my ears, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then that's your time. <laughs>